Patrick with another DJ's Brewto Beer Review. Well, you know, guys, if you've been watching DJ's Brewtube long enough, which a lot of you have, if you're watching me talking my insanity and my insane smack right now, you've been watching for a little while, so you know one of my favorite things is to kick back with a big ass Russian Imperial Stout. Spring, summer, winter, fall, it don't matter what season it is. I love Russian Imperial Stouts. Doesn't have to be cold out. That doesn't matter. The mood's just got to hit me, and I'm down for one. So, where are we going to go to get our stout fix today? We're going to go to Brooklyn Brewing Company out of Brooklyn, New York, US of A. Yay, yay! And we're going to have the 2013-2014 vintage of their black chocolate stout. That's right. Now, you've seen me review the 2012-2013 vintage of this. Why do you say DJ is taking you so long to review this one? Well, <laughs> because I forgot I bought it. That's right. I was cleaning up the hoard, organizing things, cataloging stuff, and I found a four-pack of this that I bought when it first came out. At time of review, this is approximately eight months old, maybe maybe almost nine months old. I'd have to check their Julian date or something on there, but I think we're about eight and a half to nine months old. Now, as you know, this beer is a Russian Imperial Stout. It's usually a, it's a winter availability when they produce it. Annually since about 2000. It's 10% ABV and 51 IBUs. Now for hops in this they're using Wilmet and American Fuggles. And for malts they're using like six or seven different malts. I think they're using two row caramel, malted wheat, and then they use like a mix of a, a bunch of different roasted um, American barleys and, and other malted grains in this beer. Um, now it's called black chocolate stout but that doesn't mean it has adjuncts in it. All the flavors in this beer are derived from malts. There's no chocolate, no cacao nibs, none of that stuff in here. It's all straight up malt. There's a very traditional version of a Russian Imperial Stout. They go through three mashes when they brew it. It's probably an expensive beer to brew. Now this beer reminds me a lot of these two beers here, the Blackout Stout and Siberian Night. They're all that kind of ilk and that kind of like recipe generation sort of, though I think this beer probably predates these maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna stop flapping my gums. Pop the top on this and tell you what's up with the 2013-2014 cellared version of Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout. Boom! Awesome hiss off the top. I've got this probably about like 55 degrees. I put, took it up to the fridge just to chill it off just enough. Let's pour this bad boy. I'm ready for a stout. It's been a while. Yeah. Hell yes. Look at that, guys. Look at that freaking black tar pouring into my snifter. Happy the man. That's right. At least I am, because I'm a freaking statoholic. You know that. Okay, let's get an appearance on this. Look at this gorgeous beer. Black as pitch. There is no light coming through this beer. I got a solid one finger head, super tightly packed bubbles, maybe a little tiny soap sudsy at the top. Really dark khaki, dark chocolate colored head. When I swirl it, man. Tons of alcohol legs and the clingy foam's already starting to grab on the inside of the glass, but there is no light penetrating that. Look at that, guys. That's a prototypical Russian Imperial Stout. That's what one should look like. Um, you know, when I graded this beer last time, I gave it an A, and I'm really interested to see, and that beer was fresh pretty much when I reviewed it, and I'm really interested to see what a cellar version of this is going to be like on my palate and what I think of it when I review that, you know, in, in this form. And also, you probably know if you watch, you know, their Black Ops, which is the barrel-aged version of this wasn't my favorite. So, let's see what's up in the aroma department. Yeah, coffee, chocolate, big dark fruits. Not a hint of alcohol. Getting dark chocolate and milk chocolate in there. Caramel, toffee, a bit of leather, pipe tobacco. Man, Man, this is what I love about Stouts, man. All those rich, dark, brooding flavors and aromas that come at you. And from the nose, man, they sell themselves. Look at the appearance. It's a gorgeous-looking beer. They sell it with your eyes. And then when your nose gets to it, man, you're hit with chocolate, coffee, dark fruits. Bam! Right up in your freaking grill. <sighs> Anyways, I'm going to have a beer gasm here soon. Let's get a taste on this before that <sighs> happens. Cheers. Wow. Damn. Wow. Look at that glass lacing, guys. Man. Great mouthfeel to this beer. Medium full. Spot on carbonation. You don't taste any alcohol in it, but you get alcohol warming as it goes down. 
The cool thing about this beer, when I reviewed it last time, I got a lot of cherry flavor when I had the 2012, 2013 version when it was fresh. And the cherry in this is actually bigger. It's more like ripe black cherries this time. Last time, I, as I recall, um, it was more like a, like, a, like a maraschino cherry or a candy cherry inside of a chocolate. But wow, you get chocolate, coffee, bit of toffee and then it's like a burnt sugar and dark roasted coffee aftertaste that brings you back for more it's a semi-dry finish and all from the middle to the beginning and back it's like chocolate dark cacao chocolate that i'm getting mixed in with dark roasted coffee i get a bit of that that sort of um like like i said that burnt sugar aftertaste it's like a coffee mixed with some like really dark caramelized sugar. Wow. Super easy to drink. Dangerous beer. The only thing that indicates this, this that this is a 10% brew is the warming that you get in the in the chest. Um, the mouthfeel for me is spot on for this style of stout, non-barrel aged, non-super big stout. You know, it's not you don't expect this to be the mega viscous, you know, thick stout syrupy, but damn, this is a delicious beer. Cellar with about I think eight and a half months on it nine months on it like it's got now This is a delicious beer and they tell you on the website as well if memory serves from reading it about a year or so ago That they actually stayed on there. This will age really well I think I've got about four years of a vertical myself built up in this because I've been drinking this since probably about oh 2009 2010 somewhere in that range, but anyways What do we grade a beer like this? I can give you fresh grades, and there's probably some some cellar grades mixed in there because this beer has such a long life history. So overall grades from right beer are 100. Beer Advocate gives it a 93. I'm giving this beer a 97. It's nearly an A-plus beer. It's so delicious. I want to cellar this some more, and I can't wait to one day dig into a vertical of this because that will be a freaking drunk-ass night and a fun night. So I'm giving this a straight-up A. I gave it an A before, but, man, cellared. I think it's even better than I remember it being fresh, but fresh is a delicious beer too, and it's value priced. I believe a four pack of this was like $8.99 or some junk like that, which is, that's that's frick ridiculously cheap. So, to the next DJ's BrewTube, thanks a million to each and every one of you for watching, and you gotta do me a big ass favor. You gotta think locally, you gotta drink locally, and you gotta support the craft beer mail movement to help this thing keep growing. So more breweries will create classics like Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout so we can hit that happy malt maniac button and get a big smile on our face, give you a bunch of love, and what else? You know what's coming. A big ass. A pizza.